Let's take a look at some of my recommended settings for the Leica M8. Most of this will apply as well to the Leica M9. I've spent quite a lot of time with an M9, and this is the second M8 that I've used. M8 and M9 are rather old cameras. They still use CCD sensors, so the sensor technology is not as good as, as newer cameras in low light, although some people, myself included, say there's a certain charm to the way they look and the colors out of camera. I'm not going to get into the debate of whether or not that's better. Newer cameras can certainly emulate the older ones just fine if you spend little time in Lightroom, but if you like the look of them out of camera, then these are an easier way to get there. Like I said, this is the second M8 that I've owned. I actually owned one before, and I had an M9 for quite some time. These cameras are very old, and it definitely shows in terms of their design, layout, and menu systems. Some of the menus are not as clear-cut as the ones you find in cameras today, such as the SL or the SL2 or a newer M. So I'm going to show you some of my recommended settings and what I think works best for me when shooting these older cameras. One of the things that's not really a setting that I recommend, get a lens with a larger aperture. These cameras are not so good in low light. If you want to shoot in anything that's not just really nice, bright, or even overcast conditions, anything in, you know, once the sun has started to go down or anything indoors, get a lens with a wide aperture. It will save you a lot of headache. So the camera's layout is quite simple. There's no real, like, special buttons or anything. There's a lens release, a lens preview that functions the same as the ones on the film cameras that you'll never use, a rangefinder window, like a logo, light meter, frame line illumination window, and the rangefinder. The M8 has a window on top to show you the uh, battery life and remaining shots. Let me go ahead and power the camera on. You can see it there. And there's a flash hot shoe, which you'll never use. Shutter dial, which positions from 8,000 to B to A. M8.2s have an S position for snapshot, which you'll never use. And the M9 only goes to 4,000. You might as well trait this one as well, like it only goes to 4,000, as anything above 4,000 is unreliable. I'm going to leave it on A for now. The shutter dial, surrounded by the power switch, has positions for off, single shoot, continuous, and self-timer. These are not fast cameras. You'll only use the S setting most of the time. On the bottom, rather simple. Just like the film cameras, it has a removable bottom plate. It slides open. The SD card goes in here, and the battery goes over here. We don't need to spend any more time looking at that, as I'm sure you know exactly how to insert the battery in a camera. The back has buttons for Hello iPhone, Play, Delete, Protect, this is an ISO button on the M9, Info, Set, Menu, a dial, and a D-pad. Let's go ahead and power the camera on again. So when you turn it on, nothing will happen. That is normal. Nothing shows on the screen until you press a button. The playback button will play whatever picture you took last. Delete does nothing, but if you're looking at one, it deletes it. I don't think I need to explain that. The M8 has a protect button. On the M9, this is an ISO button that works by holding it in and turning the dial to your desired ISO. That is how you change the ISO on an M9. The info button does nothing. It does some things in playback mode. On the M9, it's how you check your battery life and your SD card space. On the M8, as discussed, it's a screen on top. The set button is a quick settings menu. It has things like ISO, exposure compensation, white balance, image compression mode. I'm just going to go ahead and change mine to DNG to JPEG basic for reasons I'll explain later. Your resolution and your user profiles. Profiles are something you probably won't use on a camera with so few settings like this. That's the set menu. To set things, you also hit set. So it's both the OK button and the set button. There's no OK button over here, confusingly. The main menu is rather short. I'm going to scroll through it quickly, and then I will explain every item on it. All right, lens detection detects whether or not you're using a Leica lens with a 6-bit coating, as well as a UVIR filter. I have it turned off because I use Zeiss lenses, such as this one, or this one over here. They're not coated, so it doesn't matter. 
If you'd like to save a user profile, this is how you do it. You can load them from the set menu. This sets how long the self timer works for when setting it from up here. Auto ISO setup. I don't recommend using auto ISO on this camera. Sharpening. This affects JPEG settings. Color saturation is also for the JPEG. I recommend setting this to black and white. When you have this set to black and white, and you in the set menu have something selected other than just straight DNG, your previews on the LCD when you hit play will be in black and white, but the DNGs when you take them back to your computer will be in color. I find this very useful so I can get a preview of what things look like in black and white without throwing away all my black and white or DNG data. Contrast is also for JPEG settings. Monitor brightness, you can just leave it at standard. This affects the histogram in info mode. When you go into play and hit info, you can change how your histogram looks. Picture numbering, you won't need to change this. Auto review, I recommend turning this off to save battery life. Auto power off, I recommend turning to two minutes to save battery life. Flash sync, should you ever use a flash, you can choose if it starts at the start of the exposure or the end. I like second curtain, so I have it set there. Auto slow sync, I don't use this because I don't use a flash. Color management, sRGB, Adobe RGB, or ECI RGB. Leave this alone if you're shooting DNG, otherwise, I don't know, Google it and figure out which one you want to use. Reset, don't hit this on accident. Sensor cleaning opens the shutter so that way the sensor can be cleaned. Date and time are self-explanatory. Acoustic signal, I recommend turning this completely off because it's rather annoying. It just makes noise every time you do anything. Language, I recommend choosing one that you can speak. I find the cameras easier to use that way. Format SD card, firmware, and advance. Advance is actually an interesting setting. Typically the shutter on the Leica S or the Leica M8, sorry, and on the M9. There are a few other settings for the M9 for this, but I can't explain them right now as I've forgotten what they've done. The standard advance sounds like this. Or you can choose to use the discrete advance. And the difference with the discrete is when you hold down the button, it doesn't wind on until you let go. This might be quieter if you're trying something sneaky, like taking pictures under dresses or, I don't know, street photography. I just use the standard one because the camera lags a little bit less when you do this. So my recommended settings, ISO, don't use auto ISO, use whichever one is, calls for. You can use up to 640 in color, although some people find it gets a little bit grainy. I don't mind it. 1250 I use exclusively in black and white, and 2500 exclusively, exclusively if I truly have to, and only in black and white. Anything lower than this is fine to use in any occasion. 1250 works fine in black and white. They all look good in black and white, and up to 650, 640 in color. EV. I like to use my meter set minus one third. I do this in all of my cameras. You can choose whatever you decide. White balance. I shoot uh, D and G, so this doesn't matter to me. You can choose whatever, as well as manual and Kelvin settings. Compression. If I'm shooting black and white, I set it to DNG and JPEG basic. This makes the preview on my screen in black and white as well. Otherwise, when shooting just color, I choose DNG. For resolution, you can only change this for the JPEGs, don't touch it. And I don't use user profiles. The camera is relatively simple to use if you treat it like a JPEG or like a film camera. Here are some of those black and white JPEGs, by the way. You can see they look awful because I was just pointing out my window. Let's go ahead and delete those. Menu to go back. Or delete to go back, I guess. Yeah, this one's a little different. I'm used to the SL. The protect button is a button you'll never use. If you have an M8 or an M9, you don't even have this button. I envy you. It's a very simple camera. If you treat it like a film camera and be mindful of your ISO, I think you can have a wonderful time using an older camera like this. Enjoy.